I have been managing a community composting facility for more than 12 years. This consists of large bins right beside the Red Gardens, where I put in all the crop remains, weeds, and other organic materials from the surrounding landscape, and I've been encouraging other people from my community to add their household organic waste to it as well. The numbers have fluctuated over the years, but I would estimate that about 20 households, plus the local hostel and the bakery, have been adding biodegradable material from their kitchens. It has been an interesting project and I learned a lot, and it has also been great to be able to provide this useful service within our community. But earlier this year, I decided to stop allowing other people adding material to these bins. It did feel like the end of an era, and there was a few interconnected reasons why I decided to stop something that was useful to myself and to quite a few other people in the community. I didn't set out to establish and manage a community compost facility, it just kind of evolved. Years ago, I set up some big compost bins made out of pallets that I used to dump all the material from the gardens as a rough composting system. This was set up beside the Red Gardens, in the allotments area of the Sika Village project, which was open to the public and away from the houses, so the potential smell and pest issues were away from where people lived. As houses were built and people began to move into the community, a few of my new neighbours asked if they could empty their organic bins from their kitchen into these compost bins. And it grew by word of mouth from there, eventually becoming a broadly accepted and widely used facility, mainly because it was easy for people and it worked, or at least I was willing to do the work. For a number of years, these compost piles were the main source of fertility for the vegetable gardens I was continuing to develop, and I never really felt I had enough compost. Importing compost didn't feel appropriate to me at the time, and there were fewer options available back then, and there had been problems with herbicide residues in the locally available manure, so I didn't want to use it. For these reasons, I was eager to take household organic matter where I could get it, including cardboard and paper, to be able to make more compost for the gardens. I saw it as an essential part as a more sustainable form of nutrient cycling for building soils and growing food locally. In addition to being the main form of fertility and soil building in the gardens, this compost setup became an exploration into the possibilities of managing a community composting facility. At the time, I felt there were too many rules being spread around about composting, especially about the wide range of material that should not be added, including cooked food, meat, bones, bread, oil, dairy products, citrus peel, and a lot of other stuff. The main reasons for many of these rules seem to be avoiding attracting rats and other creatures, or to not have too much of particular types of material that would slow down the decomposition process. I also knew that it was all decomposable, especially as I had so much other material to mix it in with. This normally excluded stuff is often full of valuable nutrients, and if this type of food waste was not added to the compost, where would it go? So I thought it would be interesting to try to manage a composting facility that ignored the usual rules restricting what should be added to the compost pile, at least the rules relating to food waste. This no rules composting system eventually evolved into a one rule compost system, with the one rule being anything that was recently alive could be added, and I considered a couple of years to be recent enough. The methods I used to manage this compost evolved, of course, mainly in ways that made it easier, and I rebuilt and improved the containers a few times. There were some issues, including rats, which are always an issue in compost piles, but I developed very effective ways to control the rat population without excluding them or restricting the types of organic material that was added. This all worked quite well for a few years, but then I decided to stop managing this composting system as a community composting facility for a few reasons. The main reason was probably that this source of compost was no longer as important or as valuable to me, and that made all the other issues more of a problem. For the past few years, I've been buying in large amounts of municipal compost each year, which has definitely been easier to use, though it does cost a fair amount. With all the different gardens I've been managing and the explorations I've been doing, it has been really useful to have lots of ready-to-use compost that is clean and consistent. This type of municipal compost is fairly high carbon and lower fertility that is probably best used as a mulching compost, but I've been exploring how to amend it to become a more of a feeding compost that can be more valuable to the plants and the soils. And I'm relying more on liquid feeding and using various forms of concentrated amendments in the different growing spaces. So I started these gardens trying to use mainly my own compost as a primary amendment for building the soil and feeding the plants. 
and getting all of this extra organic material from all of the houses to add to my compost to eventually feed the gardens made a lot more sense. And even though I have a lot more space under cultivation, I don't need to rely on my own compost as much, especially as it takes a lot more work and hassle to get into a usable condition. Turning the piles of compost is one of the bigger and heavier tasks, and I've always done this by hand, partially because the location means that it's not possible to use a tractor or other heavy machinery. I used to do this turning more frequently in the past, partially because it helped to speed up the process. More recently, I have been turning less frequently, which means less work, but also a greater number of slowly decomposing piles on the go at one time, and sometimes I would run out of space. This was one of the big issues this past year, as I had a backlog of older piles of compost needing to be moved, or consolidated, or sieved and used, in order to make enough space for the next batch. I found myself in the gardens late in the evening before I had to head away for more than a week, moving a lot of compost and setting up a new bin so that there was space for everybody to put their compost in while I was away. It was really inconvenient timing and poor planning on my part, but that was a moment that I decided I was going to stop providing this community service. A key reason for this backlog of compost is that it all has to be sieved before using to remove all the things that I don't want in my gardens. Some of this is undecomposed sticks and other woody material, chicken bones, the tough stems of larger brassica plants, and stones that I would prefer not to put back in the garden beds. But the most frustrating stuff is all of the plastic and other non-decomposable material that comes from the houses, including a surprising number of spoons, peelers, and knives. There is plastic tape from cardboard boxes, the nets that vegetables are sold in, plastic bags that someone might have thought were decomposable. There's also string, labels, coffee cup lids, drink boxes, and lots of other packaging and random bits of plastic. Because I've been mixing in lots of cleaner material from the gardens in with the more plastic-filled stuff from the houses, there's a greater volume of material overall, and unfortunately, I have to assume that there's plastic in all of it. I imagine most of this plastic was added unintentionally, but it does feel that some people are being less careful or simply not caring, as it feels like there's a lot of this stuff there. I do need to remember that the volume of the pile would have shrunk considerably because of the decomposition of the organic material. So the number of pieces of plastic in a bucket or in a wheelbarrow will go up over time or become more concentrated as the compost matures. I do have a feeling that more plastic has been added to the compost in recent years, and this could be an increase in the use of decomposable plastic bags, which seem to take quite a while to break down. But I suspect that one or two households may be contributing a lot to the problem more recently, or it could be that I'm simply noticing it more because I'm more frustrated by it. One of the issues that I faced is I don't have an easy way to contact everyone who uses it, to send out a simple request or reminders to not add certain material. I could, of course, have put up a sign on the compost, but I have a fairly strong bias against signs like that. I could have also addressed it in other ways, and I did talk to some people about this issue. But in hindsight, I should have put in more effort to contact everybody who added material to those compost bins to try to reduce the issue before I became too frustrated by it. But even if everyone knew and were very careful about following the one rule, there would still be plastic accidentally getting into the material, so the compost would still need to be sieved. I also began to feel that some people were using the system to simply dump waste that they would otherwise have to pay to get rid of, with no real sense of helping with nutrient cycling and building soils for local food systems. This probably would have been fine in the past when I valued this organic material much more, but lately it has felt different for me. I have been planning to move this community composting facility to a new location, away from the gardens, where it was easier to access for the people in the community and to maintain the existing area for only material from the gardens and surrounding landscape, which would result in a finished compost that was a lot cleaner and easier to process into something that was useful for the gardens. The segregated compost generated mainly from the household organic waste would still need to be sieved before it was usable, but it would be a substantially smaller volume. And with enough space, the compost could simply mature out of the way until it was convenient to process and use. The whole thing could be rebuilt to be rot-proof, easier to manage and access, and closer to electricity supply, which would make the sieving process easier with the use of a vibrating motor. That was the plan, but I had a hard time finding the time to set up this new system, and I began to realize that I didn't really want to put in the time to have to manage it into the future. I wanted to focus my time on other things, to explore other types of composting systems, and I figured that I had learned most of what I wanted to from this 12-year-long exploration. 
A few months ago, I put up the first sign in 12 years on these compost bins to notify everyone that the community composting facility would be closing, and I sent an email to one of the community email lists. I wanted to give enough time for everyone who relied on it to figure out some other place to put their household organic material. And I was hoping that someone else or a group of people would be interested in taking on the task to create a new composting facility, and I offered to help in any way I could. But several months later, nothing has appeared to replace it, at least not at a community or broader collective scale. I know some people set up their own compost bins in their gardens and a few neighbors joined together, but it seems that a lot of the households who had been relying on the compost piles that I manage are now paying a waste disposal company to haul off all of their household organic material, which I think is unfortunate. So, in order to get even more compost for the vegetable gardens, I started a community composting service integrated with the composting system that I was already managing for the gardens. And it also felt good to provide a useful service for my community. And I stopped it because the compost was no longer as valuable to me, so I wasn't so eager to do the work to sieve out all the plastic, which led to the piles of compost building up, and it became a hassle to make the space for new material. I could have re-established the community composting part as a separate facility, but I didn't feel I had the time to set it up, and was increasingly frustrated with other people not putting in the effort to reduce the amount of inappropriate material that ended up in the compost. I wanted to move on to other things, so I stopped, and no one else stepped up to take over, so we no longer have a community composting facility. I still have a backlog of finished compost that needs to be sieved, and other piles that need to be turned a few times and allowed to mature before using. But I hope to have all of the community-based compost sieved and used in the gardens next year to clear the area and be done with having to deal with all the extra plastic. I am still using the same bins in the same location to continue to make compost out of the material that comes from the gardens and the surrounding landscape and from our own kitchen. But once I clear out a lot of the backlog, I'm looking forward to trying out different systems and methods for making compost. I'd like to explore using a bioreactor and to possibly get hens again to help with the composting process and to explore ways of making better quality compost in general. And perhaps in the future I might set up another community composting facility because I think it's an important thing to have. But this time I will probably do things differently. The videos that I have made about this composting system in the past have been the most watched videos on this channel, and a lot of the people who watch my videos now originally found this channel through those videos. So that was another substantial benefit to all of this effort and learning. And a significant reason for stopping this particular compost project is to give myself the time and space to explore other methods and ideas, so that I can make additional videos about compost in the future. If you like this type of exploration and the videos that I make, please consider supporting this channel and my work through Patreon or PayPal. The links to both are in the description below. But more importantly, thank you for watching.